Hey, kia ora guys. I just thought I would um, speak to you a little bit about anatomy and changes that um, your body goes through um, during both, well, puberty, thinking about fertility um, and reproduction. Um, so just going to start off here with male anatomy. Okay, so I've got the two different pictures here. One is labelled and one is not. Um, so just going to start off with down here in the oh, pointer down here in the um, scrotum, okay, so in the scrotum here, which is the whole area of tissue below that is included the testes, now this is where the um, sperm is made, okay, so when um, it is time for an ejaculation, the sperm um, will come up through the van deferens, which is this big tube here, um, it needs to mature first though, so and it does that in the epididymis right here. Okay, then it goes up through the van deferens all the way along um, where it is then met with the seminal vesicles, so this is where the semen is created. So that's added to the um, mixture, I guess. And then the prote pros prostate gland, sorry, also adds fluid into this mix. Okay, so that goes down the urethra and out the penis there. Okay, um, so other things to point out with this picture, this is the bladder here. Okay, so yes, it's the same tube, <laughs> same opening, same tube. Um, prostate gland, so a reason people in their elderly um, life have issues with urination is because the, when the prostate gland gets enlarged, it can um, hinder on the ability for this urethra to be opened. Um, what else do we have? Um, I think I've got all these. These are my um, words to look through. Okay, we've got scrotum, testes, epididymis, ductus, there's difference, seminal vesicle, prostate gland, and the urethra. Oh, yeah, so penis here, if you can see, this picture is probably better. Okay, it's made up of three sections of muscle. All right, the first, um, there's two either side of each other that are. Um, corpus callosum and that means or that is the other type of muscle that gets hard so during an erection or when it's erect that is what is hard and the corpus spongiosum remains soft so that's the one underneath there and the reason is um, that if all three were hard then nothing would be able to get out through the urethra in the middle so the corpus um, spongiosum allows there to be some sort of movement through um, for the fluid cool. so that's a male um, anatomy. So obviously in an ejaculation um, you're going to get semen and sperm coming out of the end of the penis, or the head of the penis. Okay, and we'll go to the next slide, to the female. This slide looks busy, I know. I've got a very detailed picture up here, okay. Um, and that is side on. So this one here is front on, but it's not as human looking, so I think I'll just explain that a bit better. Um, so this part here that we're looking at, the uterus, well, the whole area here is this part, ah, this part here, all right, so that's that section, okay, so I'll explain through in this picture here, all right, so firstly, uh, during intercourse um, and ejaculation, sperm will travel up here and it can travel along to there and it can live within the female um, reproductive organs for around um, anywhere from anywhere to seven days, anywhere to seven days, sorry. Um, all right, so with a female um, in puberty, uh, the beginning of a menstruation cycle is when an ovum is released into the fallopian tubes. Okay, so when it gets mature enough to be released, uh, the fimbriae kind of rub on the edge of the ovary and the um, ovum is released and this travels along do, 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 along here okay and as I said there can be still uh, there can be see, uh, sperm in the fallopian tubes now if it gets um, if the egg gets fertilized here which means if a sperm um, breaks through into the inside of the ovum and they are fertilized then it can implant here too or it could uh, continue down but it can implant in the fallopian tube and if that happens that is called an ectopic pregnancy 
okay? And that's usually required, that requires surgery and um, can require removal of fallopian tube. Um, all right, so the ovum is still traveling along. That travels into the uterus. And if this, this ovum, yep, here we are, is not um, fertilized, then uh, the female's wall of the uterus, which is this part here, which has been building up, building up, building up, uh, will release up through the cervix as um, menstruation or the blood that you'll know as period blood. Um, during a pregnancy though, so if this was implanted, it was fertilized and implanted, um, then the cervix builds up um, with a like a cork type situation, obviously not made of cork, and this uh, prevents um, the anything going out or in to damage the egg. So that's that then becomes the womb or the uterus is the womb there, and that grows your embryo into a fetus and into a baby. Um, that's pretty much all I have to tell you. This area here, the cervix, so when um, a baby is ready to be born, this section here which starts as no entry basically, or very very tiny, has to stretch to 10 centimeters before the head can come out. Um, I think that's it for this. Thank you very much.